Outdoors Del Marva covers everything outdoors. Including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We do our best each and every week to keep it tasteful, but discretion is advised. Now, enjoy the show. This week on Outdoors Del Marva. Rig it up and let's go trolling. We're headed offshore in hopes of hooking up some bluefin and see how we stacked up to some competitive anglers looking to make their mark. Then it's a fine balance between fun loving and downright crazy. Strap on a helmet and battle it out as we get a first hand look at this canoe joust. And you can do a lot of things in 100 years, but one wish went by the wayside until now. We sent the viewer venture cam along for the ride with this milestone man. Right now on Outdoors Del Marva. Still green. There's big carp, big carp, big carp, big carp. I got him. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. We'll be checking in with my partner, Captain Willie Dykes, in just a few minutes. We know we've been talking a lot of tuna lately. Heck, a couple of weeks ago, the guys from the Ocean City Fire Department sent us in some video of their offshore yellowfin tuna trip. Just this past weekend was the MSSA's 22nd annual tournament based out of Ocean City and down there in Chincoteague and Wachapreek. But we thought it would be high time that we got out here ourselves and did a little offshore fishing. So I'm about 25 miles off the coast of Ocean City, Maryland this afternoon aboard the Miss Caroline with Captain J.W. Hawker and the crew. And when we left the Fisherman's Marina this morning, we had one thing on our mind, bluefins. Just before 6 a.m., the crew aboard the Miss Caroline departed from the Ocean City Inlet as Captain J.W. Hawker kept the throttle down for about a 75 minute ride. Yeah, our game plan is uh, we're gonna be patrolling uh, about six or seven rods probably. Uh, keep the boat moving, just work the area, and uh, mark, look for the fish on the depth finder, mark the bait, find the fish, and then it'll, it'll start snapping. First stop is Jack Spot, a well-known offshore location close enough to home to make it convenient, and with a storied history of often thick schools of fish and the occasional big catch that most wouldn't expect just 20 miles from shore. Uh, we've caught some big bluefin out here, 125, 130 pounds. So every once in a while, somebody gets hooked on one, they can't get to the boat. Once settled, we begin a steady troll using fresh ballyhoo, along with some artificials rigged to spreader bars. It's meant to simulate a swimming school and a favorite target for an aggressively feeding tuna. And in literally just a few minutes, we are hooked up and it's feeling like it's gonna be a good day. Now the tuna that's gone for the left side spreader bar doesn't feel like it's going to break any records and Chris doesn't waste any time letting him off. But our gaff cam was in pretty good position to see fish number one come to the boat. Yeah, the fishing's been real good. It's been, uh, been some real good yellowfin fishing for the last week or so and uh, these bluefin seem to have shown up pretty thick here in the last week or two. We'll see if we can, uh, can't get back on them. Unfortunately, it would be the only fish for the first few hours, and it was looking like Jackspot was pretty fished out, at least for today. Today it started out pretty good. It slowed down a little bit right now. But they get finicky once in a while. They'll pick up again. But not to rest on a single released fish, Captain Hawker sets course about seven miles to the north to the Twin Racks, where more reports of more early bluefin have been coming in. And though it took a while, we are back in the fighting seat when we get bit, and it's feeling like we might have found something with some size. As this tuna gets closer, we get a great shot on the underwater camera as it dives then surfaces at the back of the boat and then smacks the water repeatedly before we finally get this keeper aboard. Not the biggest bluefin this crew has ever seen, but this 41-incher has some weight to it, and it's right in that legal range. Charter boats are allowed to take one between 27 and 47 inches, and one from 47 to 59 inches. So they're protected, and we live with it. 
aboard the crew of the Miss Caroline, releasing a few more smaller tuna rounds out a successful trip. And an encouraging sign for the summer ahead. Well, once we got the reports that there were blue fins pretty close off the coast, we decided to get out here early. But you know, there's still plenty of time to book a charter or get out there if you've got a private boat. The blue fins usually stick around until about the end of July, if not even a little bit later. So get outdoors, Delmarva. Thanks, Mike. It looks like it could be a heck of a year for tuna out there. And if you think that 41 incher was nice, wait until you see this. Here's Mike again with some sights and sounds from a few of the weekend's big fishing tournaments. After our own offshore adventure, we decided to check out the scales at this past weekend's MSSA tournament, as well as the Ocean City Marlin Club's annual small boat tournament. And both weigh-ins kept the scales pretty busy at Sunset Marina. First stop, the tournament. When our cameras got there just in time to see a whopper arrive on the deck, the digital scale reads 104, but the official weight on this bluefin tuna was just over that. 105.3. And currently second place behind a 108 pounder caught aboard the same boat the day before. Uh, most of the dolphin hit at one time. I think we had five one at a time. Uh, the bluefin hit the uh, short rigger. It was about 30 minute flight. And it was an impressive catch overall as the crew of the Lady Luck 5 also weighed in some dolphin, including a 32-pounder. Open tuna, 85.2 pounds. Next, we checked in with the Marlin Club just down the docks, where teams of anglers in this separate event were also bringing home some nice fish. The crew of the mm, mm Good from Ocean City weighed in this nice bluefin, which held on to the tournament's heaviest, earning a $500 payout on its own. Well, we had one bite, one fish, and that's the way we like it. That's the one we wanted. We were about to leave and head out to the deep. And we decided to stick it out a couple more minutes and did a plane arrive. Congratulations to all the winners in both the small boat tournament and the tournament. We'll see you out at the scales. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, strap on your helmet and try to keep your balance. You've got to be a little crazy to be a canoe jouster. But first, did you know, over the past several decades, bluefin tuna populations have decreased by as much as 90% in some parts of the world. As a result, scientists have attempted to breed them in captivity to bolster their numbers. Has it been successful? The answer, when we come back. Outdoors Delmarva is sponsored by Shorts Marine. Shooter's Choice. and Goody's Marine. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. Did you know? In 2009, scientists in Germany were the first to successfully breed bluefin tuna in captivity. But many see the process as controversial because it involved giving the fish hormones in order to spawn. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. You know, you've got to admire the spirit of our local volunteer firefighters, not only for their heroics on the job, but also for their persistence in fundraising. And as one Delaware group is proving, they're not afraid to take a beating for a good cause. Okay, gentlemen, joust. Pennington Pond in Bowers Beach, Delaware, makes a fitting arena for a most unusual contest. Anybody that's crazy enough to uh, get in a canoe and want to paddle out and try and knock somebody else off on a nice hot summer day in this murky water. Yeah, it, it, it's fun for all. Big family event, everybody has a blast here. Ready, here you go. 
Canoe jousting is not for everyone, and a lot of people wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. But for this hearty breed of soggy centurions, you're almost guaranteed to be touched by one. Hard. The rules are anybody who uh, gets knocked off the platform into the boat or into the water, they lose that round. And the one who gets to stay on top of the platform gets to stay high and dry and is declared the winner. Go. Okay, Milford next finest. Ten teams will face off in a double elimination contest this afternoon that will raise money for the Bowers Beach Volunteer Fire Department. Whoever remains afloat at the end will take home not only one of these handsome trophies, but bragging rights to last a whole year. I'm from here, so I love it. In this aquatic circus, if you don't have the balance of a tightrope walker, you'll certainly have the water displacement of a baby elephant. Good How are your chances? 100%. 100%. That's how confident 100%. Just look at me. No question. Look at his face. <laughs> Defending champs, the Three Stooges, are the odds-on favorites, but they're up against some steep competition against teams with Names like We're Here for the Beer and Whatever. It's time now to break out our waterproof sports camera to show you a unique perspective the view of the jouster. Three Stooges, are you ready? Hoorah! He's undefeated in four or five years at least. One view from the victorious. Get some, baby! Woo! Get up, get up, That's how you do it. And the other? Well, we'll see. They're hitting the boat. As the contest winds down, it becomes apparent that one of the most difficult tasks for participants of this soggy spectacle is just reaching shore. <laughs> and soon it's down to the final two. Okay, three stooges, defending champions, are you ready? Number next finest, are you guys ready? Okay, we need some encouragement from the crowd, you guys. Yes. Number one, still waiting for somebody. Number one. The Three Stooges. <laughs> the Three Stooges are crowned champs once again, but with the funds raised for their fire department, you could say the true winners are the residents of Bowers Beach. Get out of doors, Del Marva. Thanks to the Bowers Fire Company for having us out on the water. Now, if you missed this canoe joust, don't worry. There'll be another one next week. We'll see you on July 9th for the Battle on the Pocomoke in Snow Hill. Still to come on Outdoors Delmarva, we're headed back to Sussex County where wildlife research has donned the birds. We'll take you right up to a freshly hatched wild turkey nest. Stay with us. Mike and Captain Willie have more adventures to come. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker, back here at the Redden State Forest Headquarters in Sussex County, Delaware this week, where I guess we can say this is part two, showing you two different research projects happening in cooperation between DENREC and the University of Delaware. Of course, last week we showed you a study happening on white-tailed deer, where the deer are captured, tagged, collared, and then tracked with radio telemetry. Really, really interesting stuff. But this week we're going to tell you about another research project involving some birds. Yes, the wild turkeys. And this time around, we didn't have to travel very far from this spot, only a few hundred yards into the woods, to find evidence that Delaware's population is thriving. Yes, we'll be using... Um, this is our uh, telemetry re receivers, a little bit different than the 
um, deer stuff. The wild turkey is a curious bird. So for the casual observer, you would find some curious methods for studying it. During this time of the year, we're able to um, go into the nest, actually see the birds, see how many eggs they're laying and where they're nesting at. And it's the neat part by um, seeing what habitat they're using and where they're using it. In cooperation between DENREC and the University of Delaware, the Redden State Forest in Sussex County has become ground zero for trapping birds, as seen in these photos, then outfitting them with leg bands, and in the case of breeding age hens, attaching a backpack-style radio transmitter. And it goes around um, the wings, and then would come back through this, this hole, and then it forms a loop like that and goes underneath uh, each wing, and then that stays right on the back. Over the course of spring and early summer, graduate and undergrad student researchers will use the radio signals to locate birds and their nests, like this freshly hatched one, which we were able to get extremely close to. And then this corresponds to a specific hen, and then we're able to put this on um, a map. Finding out where they're nesting, um, what the nest success is, and what the survival of these hens are on a seasonal and annual basis, and also attempt to get some estimates of, of movements of these birds, what we call home range, and how that may differ uh, you know, amongst different seasonal periods. Notes are taken on if and how many eggs are being laid, if they hatch, and when they do, how many. It's what we would consider a successful nest, and then we're able to look at both uh, micro and macro habitat selection of how this bird selected this area. Just come to your rod a little more. So what Nicole's doing is gonna uh, set up about um, 30 feet from me. And I'm gonna make an estimate of how much I, of the board that I can't see. And then that's gonna give me an estimate of the, how thick the vegetation is through the area. We do that in four directions. And then that gives us an average of vegetation density. Um, where we also look at what tree species is closest and uh, diameter of the tree. Um, right here, it's gonna be American Holly. We also take um, canopy cover. And we're looking at basically just squares in here. And then we're looking at how much cover is above us. Signs of predation are also observed, such as footprints or teeth marks on eggs, shedding light on what types of animals, such as raccoons, might be raiding nests before the turkey eggs hatch. Raccoons and skunks will chew them up. And we're looking specifically at um, how a skunk chews up eggs different compared to a raccoon. Typically, a fox will grab an egg and carry it off. It's all information that combined can shed light on the type of habitat these amazing birds prefer and ultimately need to ensure their future in the state of Delaware. Now, obviously, there is plenty to follow up on when it comes to these wildlife research projects happening here around Redden State Forest in Sussex County. To learn a little bit more about this cooperative effort between DENREC and the University of Delaware, just go to OutdoorsDelmarva.com. Still to come on Outdoors Delmarva, who needs a boat when you've got a surf rod? Join these surf fishing rookies on the beach at Assateague. Stay with us. Mike and Captain Willie have more adventures to come. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. When you think about fishing in the ocean, the first thing you think is, I need a boat, right? Well, not always. Recently, we went to Assateague State Park, where some local kids kept their feet in the sand and the poles in their hand. Remember I told you to keep it as high as you possibly can? That's why. When you've been around as long as the Assateague Mobile Sports Fishermen, you've been doing something right. And each summer, this group of anglers puts its experience to work by putting fishing rods in the hands of youngsters. How you making out, little buddy? You doing all right? Just being able to share the time with the children, being able to allow them to know what my father's forefathers actually did over here on Astig Island many, many years and hope to see it continue on in the years to come with, with the new generation. It's just fun when you catch a fish. It's like you're so excited what kind it is and like just like to have fun and let it go back. Surf fishing is the most accessible form of ocean fishing, but even the old guys will tell you it can be hit or miss. 
It all starts with a good cast to get you beyond the breakers. And then you'd better have some patience along in your tackle box. And today, even the wild coast of Assateague could barely produce a bite. As you might have guessed, the kids were still having the time of their lives. It's very fun. You get a lot of exercise when I just stand out here. You walk around, you get nice fresh air, beautiful scenery, there's lots of water. It's a good place to be. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, we're breaking out the viewer venture cam for a milestone voyage. Plus, we'll have your newest viewer pictures. Outdoors Del Marva viewer pictures are sponsored by North Bay Marina. Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Shorts Marine, Shooter's Choice, and Goody's Marine. For weeks, we've been hearing about a special adventure in the works in Wicomico County. And when the time finally came, we made sure the viewer venture cam was there. Yeah, we sure did, Willie. Pete Cooper recently turned 100 years old, and he wanted to do something that he'd never had a chance to do before. We'll let his friends tell you about it. Hey, Mike and Captain Willie. It's Daryl Nixon here in Salisbury, and uh, I'm with Scott McCurdy from North Bay Marina. Many people are, uh, know uh, Pete Cooper. Pete, for many uh, years, uh, several decades, was the uh, city engineer for Salisbury. And he's 100 years old right now. Uh, he has never gone down the Wicomico River all the way to the Chesapeake Bay. So we're going to do that today for Pete. Way to go, Pete. And here's to the next 100 years of adventures. Well, it's time now to take a look at some of the pictures sent in by our own Outdoors Delmarva viewers. John Menzel from Salisbury sent in this shot of a 470-pound thresher shark caught over Memorial Day weekend, fishing at the fingers when they fought this guy for two hours before getting him to the boat and towing him back home. Here's a few pictures of the naturally curious Roots and Shoots group from Selbyville. The kids most recently created a campaign to learn about sea turtles and raised awareness about how littering can affect their habitats. Well, we love sharing your outdoors videos and photos here on the show, so please keep them coming. Just email me at mparker at wboc.com. Until next time, for Captain Willie Dykes, I'm Mike Parker reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva.